Okay, so this is a bit of a bonus lesson. And in this lesson, we're gonna be building a quite advanced override that I used on my advancedframer.com site. And basically it allows you to filter the lesson plan by clicking these tags up here. And you can select multiple and clear them. And this is all without using the CMS. It's just three code overrides. Now we need to spend a little bit of time looking at how these components are set up in Framer before we can even jump into the overrides. Okay, so here's the lesson overview. And there are two components in here. There's one up here called filters, and this contains all the possible tags. And then there's one down here called lesson list. If we jump into the lesson list component, you can see that it's just a bunch of lesson components in a stack. And how this lesson component works is it has every possible tag inside of it, but I just filtered the visibility of these tags depending on the tags being passed into the component. So if we go back up one level, you can see that we have this tags variable and it's just a comma separated list of the possible tags. You can see if we select this one, number three, there's only two tags. And on this one, number two, there's about five. And so this is doing the filtering of the actual tag component inside of the lesson. Now this is important because we're gonna use this tag property to work out which lessons to show and which lessons to hide. In the filter component, it's just a bunch of tags in a stack. And if we drill into the tag component, you can see it has an inactive state and an active state. So let's look at the overrides we're gonna need. So if I select one of these lessons, you can see they all have this with lesson filtering override already applied. If we go into the override file, so these are the three overrides we're gonna to need to build out. And it's important to note that we have a store set up and it has an item called active tags, which is a list currently empty list of the currently active tags. And so the first override over here is called with active tag, and that's applied to each one of these tags in the filter component. The job of this override is to update this store object with the currently selected tags. And then down here we have clear filters, which is set on this little X. And the job of that is to reset the store so the active tags are blank. And then the final one we're going to build is the with lesson filtering. And that is on each one of these lessons. And that basically tells the lesson whether or not it should be visible based on the active tags. And so the first one we're going to build is this lesson filtering override. And to make our lives easier, I'm going to go back to the lesson list and I'm just going to copy out this tag over here and then go back into our code override file and I'm just going to paste in those two values. I'm just going to wrap them in some quotes so they're strings and this is just going to give us some default values to work with so we know if our override is working. First up we want to try a filter based on these tags that are being passed down to this component. So let's first just log out what is being passed in as props to this component. You can see that each one of these has a description, a duration, has some framer stuff over here. But the thing we're interested in is this tags variable. And you can see it's just a comma separated string. And what we wanna do is pull each one of these out into its own tag. And that way we'll know which tags apply to this lesson. So we're just gonna pull those out into a tag variable say const tags equals props dot tags, which is this over here. And then we're just gonna split that on the comma. So this is a string method that splits up the string based on some sort of input. And now if we console log out tags, so now we just have an array of these strings. Some of them have a little space in front of them. So we wanna get rid of that. And the way we're gonna do that is map over this array. Let's do something like this. And then we're just gonna say t.trim. And now when we log those out, you can see that there are no spaces at the front. So that's great. Now we have a list of the tags applied to each lesson. What we want to do is figure out whether or not this lesson should be visible. So let's make another variable called is visible. And this is going to be equal to store.activeTags.sum. And sum is an array method where we can pass it a function. And if any items in the array meet the requirements of that function, then it will return true, which is exactly what we need because we wanna test if any of these tags are in the store. So then we're gonna pass it a function and that function will take an item, which will be each item in the array. And then we'll say tags.includes item. Okay, so now we just wanna log if is visible is true as well as the tags. So if we scroll down here, we expect anything with breakpoints or layout to be true. So here we have layout and it's true. 
here we don't have any of those things and it is false. So this is working exactly how we expect. So now what we could do is we need to wrap this component in a sort of invisible component like that. And then we can wrap it in some curly brackets and we're gonna say is visible and and return this component. So only return this component if is visible is set to true. Now you can see that that's filtered our list right down, which is awesome. So to test this, what we can do is remove layout and see if something changes. So if we remove layout, you can see that the last one leaves the list. And if we add it back in, you can see that it returns because it has the layout tag on it, but no breakpoints tag on it. But you'll notice that the way it pops in and out is kind of ugly. It just sort of leaves instantly. Now the way we can fix this is by using this animate presence library from Frame Emotion. And this is kind of awesome because it allows us to set an initial state and an exit state for items popping in and out of the React tree. And the way we use it is by just wrapping the component in an animate presence and setting some initial and exit states. So let's go do that. We can replace this with animate presence and we'll do the same here. And then on the component itself, we want to set some initial states. We want the opacity to be zero initially. And then we say animate, and this will give us the animated in state. So opacity one, save that. You can see how they sort of fade in now. And then we want the exit state to be opacity zero. And I also want to give them like a slight X offset. So let's just do X 20. And then over here, we'll say X zero. And over here, we'll go X minus 20. So now if I remove layout and press save, you can see that everything sort of fades in and we actually don't want that initial state to animate. So what we can do is set initial to false on animate presence tag and that'll stop it doing the initial animation. So now I press save and nothing flicked in and out. And if I add layout back in here, so to fully test this, we actually have to dynamically change this value because right now it's just re-rendering the whole list and we're not seeing the transition we expect. So now's probably a good time to get the with active tag override working. Now, again, this is applied to each one of these tags. So what we need to do is make sure that when one of these is pressed, it updates the store with the label that's being passed down to this tag. So first up, let's write some code here that determines whether or not this tag is active. So we're gonna say const is active. I'm gonna say equals store dot active tags. And then we're gonna say dot includes. And then we're gonna say props dot label. So the text in the tag is being passed down through a variable called label. So if we do that and then we log console.log, we wanna log the props dot label and is active. So now if we open this up, we should see true next to breakpoints and layout. So if we scroll this list a little bit, you can see next to layout, it's true. And next to breakpoints, it's also true. So that's working. Okay, so now we need to add an onClick handler here. We're gonna say onClick equals, then we're gonna pass it a function. And then within this function, we're going to add some open curly brackets. So we're gonna say if is active. And then within here, we'll do something and else do something else. And the reason we're checking if the current tag is active is we want to either remove it from the list or add it to the list depending on its presence in the list. And so what we need to do in this case, if the tag is present, we need to filter it out of the active tag list and update that list. So what we're gonna do is say set store and we'll update the active tag field. And then we're gonna say store dot active tags dot filter and filter is going to take a function the parameter will be each item in the array and we're going to say item does not equal props dot label so what this piece of code is doing is filtering out the current array and only returning items that pass this test aka items that don't match props dot label which is our current tag. Now to test if this is working, we should be able to hit layout and see some change in the list. So if I do that, you can see that layout has been removed from here, which means it's not showing up here. But now we need to handle the other case where the item isn't already selected. So in this case, we wanna say set store and we're gonna say active tags equals an array. And inside of that array, we're going to spread each member of the current store. So store dot 
active tags. And then right at the end, we're going to add in props.label. Okay, so in theory now, when I click on something else, it should be added to the list. So let's click on 3D. And you can see it's added that to the list. I click on 3D again, it should disappear from the list. There you go. And you can see that our animation is working too. But the problem is we don't know which ones of these tags are currently active. So let's fix that. And that's as simple as changing the variant based on whether or not this is active. So we'll say is active. Uh, in that case, return the active variant. And in the other case, return the inactive variant. And boom, you can see that it's already highlighted these two. And now when we add more, they are easily removed and added. And they're actually changing the list below. So let's quickly move on to the clear filters override. And this override is nice and simple because basically it just resets this to be an empty array. So if we quickly write an onclick handler and pass it in a function, and we say set store, and inside of there we want to say active tags, and we're just going to make it an empty array. So now when I click this, it should nuke all the filters. You can see that none of our lessons are showing up, which is a bug that we'll fix in a second. But you can see that this is still visible even though there aren't any active tags. So let's fix that. Let's make a variable called is visible, and let's set it to store dot active tags dot length is greater than zero. And then we're going to use the same animate presence that we've used down here. So I'm just going to copy that in and add this. Okay, now when we hit this, it should disappear. And we could probably just duplicate some of this animation logic for this one. So we'll just add that. There you go. Well, I actually kind of wanted to exit that way. So we'll do that. And now it's exiting to the right. So of course we still have this bug to fix, which is that if there are no tags selected, none of our lessons are visible. And that's because this is visible Boolean is true, only if this lesson has some tags that are in this store. So to fix this, all we need to do is say, this should be true if the tag appears in the list or if there are no tags in that list. So we say or store.activetags.length equals zero. And somehow I managed to spell length wrong again, and it still worked. But now when we clear this, you can see that everything is as it should be. And there's all 12 lessons. If we filter down, we can filter out the lessons. So to finish up, I'm just going to remove this and everything should be working as intended. And that's pretty much it for this lesson. It's a bit of a bonus. I really hope you enjoyed this mini code override course. If you did, maybe you want to check out my other course at advancedframer.com. Thanks for watching.